Hello everyone, this is a Pokemon Black and White Wi-Fi battle, um, number six, I'm thinking, um, so anyways, again, I'm using a baton team because they're really simple to use, and I'm actually quite fond of them because they're actually pretty good. Um, anyways, I'm versing this guy I saw on YouTube uh, named Chris, I forget his exact YouTube channel, it was like unwanted. Bandit or something like that. If I remember, I'll put it in the cha um, description, video description. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, I start off with Stealth Rock like always because that's what I always do. It actually really helps you. Stealth Rock is like <laughs> Stealth Rock's like one of the best things in the game. Toxic Toxic Spikes are actually pretty good too. But um, anyways, that's not the point. Um, I start off with a rock slide afterwards, right after he uses a fire blast. I don't know why he would use a fire blast anyways, but he used a fire blast and then that did nothing. And I actually just wanted Aerodactyl to die, but I just used a rock slide and one hit KO Charizard. Uh, he goes and sends out Dawn Fan, and I just go for the EQ. And I hope he gets a KO because um, my Aerodactyl is actually set up in attack. But I already knew it wasn't going to get um, a KO unless it was like a critical hit. But then again, I don't even think it would still get a KO. So he uses Double Edge. I don't know why a Dawn fan would have Double Edge. I don't know, maybe people use that, but I don't, I don't use that. So anyways, he uses Double Edge again. And he's actually helping me kill him because Double Edge would not kill me unless it gets a critical hit, which I doubt it would get a critical hit anyways. So I was left with 70 health and I go for another EQ and I finally finish Dawn Fan off. So right right off the bat I already KO'd his Charizard and his Dawn Fan which are not, well they weren't that big threats but they would probably be pretty threatening later on anyways. So I so I just KO'd them and then he goes and sends out a Star Raptor and the Stealth Rocks that I set up in the, right in the beginning actually did a quite a bit of chunk of his damage away, health away and I go for the Rock Slide again knowing that it would kill, it would do a lot of damage to a flying type, but what stinks is right when he sent out Star Raptor, he had Intimidate on it. So, uh, it lowered my attack and I didn't get the KO. If he didn't have Intimidate, I would have KO'd it and I probably actually would have swept, swept his whole entire team, but whatever, it doesn't matter. And I just go out into Gorbis because now that he's dead, I can set up and I can try and sweep him. So I go for the Amnesia and just want to raise my special defense and he uses close combat and I already knew it's not going to do anything because even if it did do a little, quite a little bit I would still have um, my leftovers that would probably raise my HP back up so yeah it raises a little, quite a little bit not that much like 20 HP but that's good because if I didn't have leftovers I actually would get, would get KO'd so anyways I use uh, iron defense get my defense up because close combat is a physical type move and look at that in the beginning he got so much damage on me right off the bat and right when I used iron defense look at yeah, he barely did any damage and my leftovers restore my HP again and I go for one more iron defense so anyways now I'm like plus four or something and like plus two special defense and he goes and uses fly and I'm like oh wow this is a perfect opportunity to get a one more um, stat raising move like iron defense and then I'll be plus six um, iron defense and plus two special defense so that'll be good enough and he uses fly the next turn so it was kind of a waste of one turn but then I thought he wasn't gonna actually do really any damage and I was like wow this thing's not even gonna do any damage what was the point of using fly and then I kept seeing the HP go down and I was like, what the hell, that was hacks. And it was a critical hit and if I didn't have leftovers, I probably, and I actually would have died. But I get survive, I survived with 8 health left and I just baton pass because my Pokemon was faster. I baton pass into Celebi and I guess he had a pretty good prediction because he used U-turn and that did uh, not too much damage. But it did, I guess, a decent amount if I didn't have uh, the iron defenses and the amnesia's up then it probably would have done a lot more but um, too bad for him so 
Uh, he goes right into his ninjask, and those stealth rocks I set up in the beginning just destroy that ninjask all the way exactly, probably, that's probably exactly half HP. And he goes for the toxic, and I just go for a nasty plot, just to get on my special attack a little bit. Uh, so it's now it's plus two, and I already know that ninjask is no threat to me, because it probably does not have any moves that can do, like, any damage to me anyways. I don't know if Ninjask learns Bug Bite or something, but I doubt it actually does. It, I, I doubt it even has Bug Bite moves. So he's just killing himself with Substitute. There was actually no point at all in doing that. But whatever, he does it, and I thought one Nasty Plot was good enough, so I just go for Shadow Ball. And hit his Substitute right in the face, and it just dies. Or fades, or whatever it does. And my Leftover sealed me up almost to full HP and this dumb toxic is doing so much damage and I could have just switched out with the baton pass and um, since my soldi has natural cure it would have been cured of the poisoning and he and that guy used substitute again which there was actually no point because he already saw that like he was gonna that substitute dies in one hit so he should have just went for an attack type move but it doesn't matter what he did it would die anyways because my Pokemon is faster but maybe he was trying to stall to get his speed up and then try and kill me but he didn't even like do anything so whatever and the toxic is hurting me a lot so this is kind of sucking for me now so I just go um, I thought I would I actually thought he would finally go for an attack move so I used recover but then he goes for solar beam which is like the worst idea ever because that takes two turns to use unless he had like nine tails or something and it had draught on it and use solar beam that still wouldn't do any damage, but I guess whatever. That's his. That's his. Whatever he does, I don't care what he does. <laughs> that's his choice. So he gets um, a solar beam on me, and it does like one damage. So that was just a waste for him, and I could have just killed him off, but I just go for a baton pass, and I switch right up into Halloween, which is my Gengar. And he gets another speed boost. I think Ninjask just gets speed boost every single turn. I don't know. And he goes for a Toxic, but it's good that I um, had a good prediction on this because he probably knew I was going to switch. And I just sw switched right into Gengar, so Toxic doesn't affect it because it's poison and like ghost or something. So um, I kill off his Ninjask and with one Shadow Ball, and then I go for a Shadow Ball on his Gliscor. I don't even think it had Toxic Orb, but I don't really think it mattered anyways, because it didn't even get to set up the Toxic Orb or anything, and plus the special attack bonuses I had just KO'd it off. Uh, he goes for his final Pokemon, which is Swampert, and I didn't expect it to have a Quick Claw, but apparently it did have a Quick Claw, and for some reason he used Earthquake on a Ghost-type Pokemon, but that's like, I don't know what he was thinking. <laughs> Um, anyways, I just go for a Shadow Ball, and that is the game, and, um, thank you guys for watching this video, comment, rate, and subscribe, and, yeah, oh, never mind, he had a different Pokemon, wow, I didn't even know that, well, it doesn't matter, because it died anyways, well, anyways, comment, rate, and subscribe, see you later, and peace out.